In Climate Watch, nearly half of Greenland's ice sheet began melting this week after an unprecedented warm spell hit the Arctic region. Temperatures were more than 40 degrees above average, leading to an estimated 2 billion tons of ice loss. Usually this type of melting doesn't occur until midsummer, and if it happens at all, well, experts believe that this early melting could impact weather on a global scale. Joining us now from Boulder, Colorado is Ted Scambos. He's our senior research scientist at the University of Colorado, Boulder's Earth Science Observation Center. So Ted, tell us exactly why do you think it is that these temperatures are becoming abnormally high in the Arctic right now? Well, there's no doubt that the initial push towards warmer temperatures comes from greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But the Arctic takes that slight amount of warming that we're seeing worldwide and amplifies it because the loss of snow on the surface in the Arctic, the loss of uh, ice on the ocean in the Arctic, and even the darkening effect that melting snow on Greenland has, all of those things act to allow the surface to absorb more heat and, and lead to more melting. So the Arctic amplifies the warming and actually by about two and a half times uh, because of the fact that it's covered by snow and ice. Why do you think it is that these ice sheets are so important in maintaining global temperatures? Yeah, it's because of the basic setup of the Earth's climate. There's warmth at the tropical regions and the poles are supposed to be cold and white and radiate a lot of heat away. And that sets up a big circulation pattern that leads to all of the things that we think are common uh, to weather, like the trade winds in the south and the fact that most of the storms come from the west, say in the United States or Europe, and then in the poles there are different wind patterns. Those things happen because the poles are cold. And if we start to warm the poles and change that ice cover, we change the entire dynamic of the Earth's climate. That's beginning to happen with more severe storms, more persistent weather patterns, longer droughts. All of that stuff is dependent on the fact that the ice on the ocean in the Arctic and the ice on Greenland are more or less the way they used to be, or we're going to see big changes. So as more water is exposed to these increased temperatures, how do you think weather you know, across the rest of the world might be impacted because of the Arctic? So what we've seen, or what we think we will see more of, is more erraticness in the weather, because that controlling factor of cold at the poles and, and warm in the tropical regions it breaks down a little bit. It's weaker. And so the the thing that keeps things moving smoothly through the climate system is, is a little bit weaker. And so what you get are either extended periods of drought or unusual cold for brief periods in the winter and not as regular a pattern of, of, of seasonal climate as there used to be. That's in the long term. I don't want to overplay that, but that's what we're likely to see more of in the future. A jet stream that snakes around the uh, northern hemisphere a little bit more uh, wildly than it used to, and weather patterns that are a bit unusual and in some cases extreme. So despite the, the abnormal amount of ice melting in Greenland, we know it's not unprecedented. In 2012, the ice sheets also under, underwent one of the greatest number of, of melts, you know, days in history that had melted. So what did we learn from that year? What does it tell us about what to expect in Greenland in the years to come? Yeah, mostly what 2012 showed us was what to expect for an extreme weather cycle in Greenland. And in fact, we are seeing that sort of set up right now with less snow from last winter over Greenland. Uh, we're anticipating that we're going to see an earlier stage towards an earlier step towards widespread melt on Greenland. Because as you lose that winter snow, the old snow that's underneath, remember Greenland is a kilometer of ice. It's not gonna go away this year, but the fact that you get to the old snow early on in the season means that you've got much more likelihood to see widespread melt in Greenland as we get into late June and July especially. What that means is that water is gonna run off of this snowy, icy surface and into the ocean. And in 2012, we lost something like 200 billion tons in total over the summer. We lost 2 billion tons uh, just in this last June. Now, you say those numbers, you've gotta to add to the fact that we got billions of tons of snow falling on Greenland last winter. But we're gonna get through that fairly quickly because it was a low snowfall winter over most of Greenland. And that's gonna to lead to an early onset of these big warm spells. So big picture, do you think we've passed the climate change tipping point where it's just too late to reverse the warming temperatures? 
We're in for warming this century pretty much no matter what we do, but we can control how fast and how extreme things get in terms of sea level rise, in terms of climate change. If we take action, all of the models show we can put the brakes on. We're going to roll into a warmer climate through the end of the century, but we don't have to careen into it at breakneck speed. And that's the thing that, that, that I think is being pitched more widely by the scientific community. Let's adapt, let's mitigate, and let's get started on a path towards um, slowing down the pace of, of global warming. That's the most important thing. Ted Scambos, thanks for joining us, Ted. You're very welcome.